Tafakro, Salam Alaikum, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, obviously, today we're doing this under uh, abnormal circumstances given the uh, situation uh, at hand, pandemic, and everything, but I'm sure this is uh, everybody's accustomed to the new normal already. So, thank you, everybody who, um, uh, who has joined us today, uh, on whether it's on WebEx or whether it's on Facebook. Uh, thank you for joining us today. So today, the, the topic that we'll be discussing today is a very important topic with regards to senior living. Uh, the title of this forum is Age Friendly City, the Future of Community Living. So we've got uh, with us today, uh, uh, like what Dr. Fakro mentioned, you know, uh, an esteemed set of panelists. Uh, and I wouldn't do it any justice if I don't give a bit everybody a bit more uh, elaborate uh, description of who we have uh, in our company today. Uh, first off, uh, I uh, would like to introduce everybody to uh, uh, Dr. Tenku Aizan Hamid, uh, who is the research fellow of the Research Institute on Aging at UPM. Uh, Dr. Tenku Aizan is an expert in gerontology and social policy uh, at uh, My Aging UPM. Uh, she is undisputedly one of the local pioneers in this field, uh, and uh, Dato, Dr. Dr. Kazan has played a, a role in the development of gerontology research policy uh, making and education in Malaysia. Uh, she is a member of both the National Advisory and Consultative Council for uh, Older Persons and the Technical Committee on Health of Older Persons. Uh, Dato, Dr. Tinko Kazan also is the designated consultant to develop the KL Declaration of Aging, uh, which has been adopted by the head of states of ASEAN uh, back in November 2016. Uh, she is also a member of the Malaysian Social Protection Council uh, under the uh, Economic Planning Unit, EPU, or the Prime Minister's Department. And she has published extensively with many international and locally funded research studies and consultancy projects on the topic of gerontology. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, Town Planner Puan Kharia Talha, uh, who is currently the Honorary President of EROF, which is the Eastern uh, Regional Organization of Planning and Housing, which covers mo uh, 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 all, mostly of uh, all of Asia, Australasia, and APEC. Uh, Puan Kharia is a qualified town planner from the University of Melbourne, uh, Australia, and she has an extensive uh, 38 years of experience as an urban planner, both in government and private sector. Uh, she has been managing her own practice in the field of urban planning, urban design, and planning research since 1996. Uh, her company, KW Associate Planners uh, Private Limited, is based in Shalam and is an award-winning firm, having introduced new initiatives in the field of urban and regional planning. Uh, her field of expertise include the formulation of state, regional, and city structure, uh, and also local plans, as well as in the field of ecotourism and also coastal and land management and protection. Uh, next up, uh, we have the award-winning architect Mustafa Kamal Zukanain, uh, who is the managing director of architect Mustafa Kamal, uh, an Auckland University alumnus from New Zealand and has been in practice for the last uh, 27 years. That's longer than I have been alive, definitely. Uh, a fellow uh, <laughs> member of the Malaysian Institute of Architects and has served uh, six term as a PAM council member uh, between 1997 to 2000 and also recently between 2014 until 2017. Uh, uh, architect Mustafa is a committee member in the Urban Wellbeing, Sustainability, Housing and Environmental Resilience uh, Committee or USHA of, the, uh, of PAM. And his area of expertise is urban resilience. I, I don't suspect it's it's uh, advising you on how to withstand mugging in the dark streets of the, of the city, but yeah, he will explain probably somewhere in the conversation today. Um, last but not least is Dr. Azmizam Abdul Rashid, who is the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of uh, Urbanist Malaysia. Uh, he is also the Head of Knowledge Platform and Partnership. Um, Dr. Azmizam uh, holds a Doctor of Philosophy in Development Science uh, in urban economic, which focuses on the efficient urban governance, uh, enhancing economy competitiveness in competitiveness in the KL City region. He has more than 25 years ex of experience in urban and regional planning, uh, uh, with regards to and also have been involved in a number of major projects, uh, including the Malaysian SDG Cities Roadmap, implementation of the new urban agenda, uh, Malaysia City preparedness for the fourth industrial revolution. 
Malaysia Society 5.0, uh, land use planning, city development planning, sustainability assessment for projects and programs, sustainable city and healthy city program. You can tell I'm running out of breath in the to describe the extent of expertise that we have today. So <laughs> this research on urban governance and sustainable cities have been published extensively uh, with various local and international journals, such as the Malaysian Town Planning Journal, Geographia, Global Journal of Human Social Sciences, uh, Arts and Humanities, uh, the World Applied Science Journal, or WASJ, the uh, Asian Profile, Asian International Journal, and then Asian Social Science. Uh, as for myself, I'm a head of a small outfit called Quest, uh, we're the co-sponsors of this event today, together with my aging UPM and co-op. Um, enough about that. So today's topic, just just to kick this off, um, we're just gonna throw in a couple of uh, well, you know, uh, umbrella statement governing statement just to kind of uh, put the conversation today in context. So. Uh, as you know, Malaysia is becoming an aging nation. We're slowly, gradually heading towards that direction. Uh, by 2030, 15% uh, uh, of our population will be over 60 years old. Now, the Department of Statistics projects that Malaysia will reach a population of 41.5 million by 2040, uh, which will bring the number of individuals over 60 years old uh, to 20% or 8.3 million individuals. Now, by definition, uh, uh, the United Nations definition, the country will be an aging nation or classified as an aging nation if 10% of its population are over 65 years old. Uh, we're currently at 7.2%. Uh, uh, Dr. Aizan could probably correct me if that number actually evolved into a higher number now, but generally, the more developed the country, the more uh, def there's a tendency that the more aged the population will be. Uh, and same time, uh, it goes without saying that we're going through this uh, situation where house prices are heading upwards, uh, specifically specifically in metro areas, uh, which makes it difficult for retirees and pensioners to uh, invest in uh, affordable and comfortable homes for their retirement. Um, the civil service itself, uh, an agency of which Co-op is very closely associated to, has an average pension uh, allowance of less than 2,174 ringgit per month. Um, and on average, 80% or sorry, 80% of our pensioners uh, between grade one and 40 receive an average pension of uh, just under 1,500 ringgit per month. Now, if you take that into consideration and the higher living uh, standards that we're experiencing right now means there is a considerable risk of urban displacement, especially in civil service retirees uh, who has been uh, working up to the end of their career in urban uh, in an urban environment or highly uh, urban environment uh, to be displaced or suffer from urban displacement uh, because they could no longer afford uh, living in areas where they used to work in. Now, Despite uh, there is a clear need for uh, to make such affordable homes available for retirees and pensioners and, and seniors and uh, uh, seniors, uh, and it is um, and despite that's a viable uh, a national national senior living policy, much uh, traction has been seen in this in this area. So we haven't seen uh, enough movement to see a viable solution to the issue at hand. Uh, and as cities grow, as urban environment grow denser and denser, uh, and you know it gets more complicated uh, each day, uh, there is a clear and uh, need for us to address this. And that's partly what we're going to be talking about today uh, in terms of the readiness of the Malaysian urban environment to kind of uh, tackle the issue of the aging population and how that would uh, be uh, accommodated in our future urban environment. So um, before before I, I go on to the more complicated and more animated questions, I'm just going to throw in every, each and one of you uh, a, a, a kind of a, uh, just to get a, a bit of a context in terms of what we're working in. Uh, my first question is, uh, what would be the current statutes, regulatory and legal provisions that we have uh, with regards to allowances for senior housing in Malaysia? And I'm going to start off with uh, Dr. Otenku Aizen to, to, to start off with on that one. Thank you, Shane Sofian. I think from the perspective of statutes and regulatory framework, for the moment, I think we don't really have one for, for in senior housing. What we have is actually a housing for the, the masses, which is actually housing for yeah, mampu milik for all. So it's not really for senior housing. Yeah. 
Can you stop there in terms of selective? Uh, point Kadia, would you like to add on to that? Well, let me be frank and honest here. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like that. All right. Seniors are not scene. even considered. Seniors are not even considered in terms of housing. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, they're not even given priority. There's no policy. There's no uh, statutes uh, mentioning about uh, giving housing for senior citizens or even getting priority, giving them priority, right, for senior citizens. But my main point here is that senior citizens, and now we're going to, like you said, we're going to have more senior citizens in Malaysia, 5.4, almost 5 million of senior citizens. And yet, senior citizens, we know, are those who will be disabled one day, but they're not even considered in the Act of Parliament where there is um, a definition of disabled people, 1998. It's not even there. So disabled people are not even considered when it comes to the rights of senior citizens in having a special treatment, special uh, environment, special services for them because they are not considered as disabled as per the definition of disabled in the Act of Parliament. All right. So that's the uh, in terms of other policies, in terms of guidelines. Kuala Lumpur, I believe that Kuala Lumpur City Hall has come up with a guideline for developers and development of uh, senior citizens housing accommodation, but that's being looked at after we had um, a session, uh, FGD focus group discussion, where we need to review the sizes of uh, uh, elderly uh, senior citizens homes or units, you know, because the thing is, most government offices think that senior citizens still need to live in large uh, accommodation, about 600 to 800 square feet of, uh, of floor space. But actually, we do not, you know, because family size become, uh, there's only the two of you, and eventually there's only be one of you, okay? So guidelines are there for senior citizens and for the development of senior citizens housing but when it comes to the statutes the act of parliament legislation none as yet i stand my case thank you Puan. that's uh you said it was so much conviction um i i i couldn't catch up <laughs> but we'll see some of the points uh that, that was mentioned now uh, you, you mentioned a, a number of interesting interesting points in terms of the special provisions for the disabled and also the seniors, but we're going to circle back to that later on. I'm going to uh, let uh, Chief Mustafa Kamal to kind of uh, hand in a few points if he has. Agreed. There's nothing in the statutes uh, in the country, either design-wise or local authority-wise, when you submit plans for senior citizens, because what they go for is actually the uh, price of the house and they go by the income of the uh, household so and uh, they only say it's for rumah untuk orang OKU there's no untuk orang yang uh, uh, warga emas warga emas so to me to me uh, it is actually quite disturbing in the sense that uh, the, uh, the, the our country has actually evolved into this aging society not just this one year or two years it has come in from the statistics from doctor just now uh, a few years ago so uh, in terms of uh, local authority guidelines there isn't any and i think uh, the only provision we have is for the pwd 2006 which was actually um, uh, put into Act Parliament for use in 2008. So that's the only thing. Uh, one. Thank you, Mus. Uh, Dr. Azmiza, would you like to chime in on that? Usually I would say, uh, given that there's three out of four saying no, and I'm going to say uh, a wholesome <laughs> no, but let, let me hear what Urbanist has to say on this one. So you, I think you're on mute. mute, mute. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Has the Malaysian life uh, longer uh, enough safety nets to ensure we can live uh, better for all age? Uh, has retirement, uh, senior living or age care required logistic and multidisciplinary approach to set up properly sustainably? It's important we need to understand uh, 
uh, beyond uh, anyone a part of the our society center a major factor malaysia should have uh, malaysia should aware of is how an aged care ecosystem should work we need to set up a place and how malaysia legal framework can support the infrastructure uh, i think uh, not for the specific like puan karya or uh, architect mustafa mentioned about uh, the legal provision for senior housing but we also have actually the provision of home for the elder regulated under care standard act 1992 reprint 2002 under section 2 is act to define form for elderly as a residential care center and day care center but not specific for the housing Absolutely. and as i'm i'm also agree that we need that specific if you want to grow all with the dignity the entire ecosystem must facilitate the regulatory standards for the LD care and is and uh, and also in enforcement that's my my view thank you so so um you're probably wondering why i kind of threw in the question starting from housing and and i think that the the most important question because that's probably the most fundamental needs in any society that we're that we're able to kind of provide uh, the basic uh, human need of of uh, having shelter uh, having a place of residence and the, the ability not to be um, uh, impeded by policy or lack of it so so what i'm hearing here is that we don't actually have an established policy to kind of uh, stimulate that um, uh, or, or kind of promote that kind of idea. Uh, now, if, if that's the case, uh, and I'm just going to throw this across the floor, um, uh, do you think, uh, given the stats that we thrown in earlier on, that we'll be having uh, just, well, eight over a million individuals by 2040 uh, hitting retirement age of being over 60, uh, do you believe or, or Otherwise, uh, cities and towns in Malaysia will run the risk of, uh, well, I'm going to say abandonment uh, for our or older adults and 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 uh, seniors in terms of their place in society and and the urban environment. Can Can I answer that? Sure. That's all. Yeah, maybe maybe we we need to look at our housing from a lifespan perspective or a life course approach because I think uh, in the early part of life. Uh, because and, and as we grow it, as we grow the uh, we need to have an environment that fits the needs of the the, the changes that we go through and i think uh, and majority of Malaysians, about more than 77% of the older person wants to live in their own community so they want to age in place so in that means that the housing must be able to support independent living and also they can modify the houses when when the, the, uh, there needs to be uh, a change in that so so in in that then we need to look at what is available across or in the in terms of the services that they they need as they, they age so i think i think and and that is where we need to go because majority of us either in the urban or in the rural area wants to age in place and we need to look at how can we age in place and we know that in malaysia more than 65 percent of our society is already urbanized so we have an intersection of aging and urbanization playing together so how is urban area suitable for aging and if it's not what needs to be done things like that that you need uh, we need to consider i think and then i'll i leave it here let the other participant uh, the panelists uh, chip in Okay. I'll, I'll chip in next. I'm, I'm 64. Okay, <laughs> already past four years past the retirement age, and and uh, and I already need some services, right? Mm. Because as a woman, and you know very well, many of us we don't have strong knees, perhaps, yeah. So to uh, and we need mobility. I agree that most of us and research has shown that aging in place is the answer to a better quality of life, not mm. to. I would say my, uh, not to put all the elderly people together in a community and then let them what uh, let them have uh, their own life. No, it we ought to integrate the elderly into the community now, yeah. right? So as we know in in our cities, we already um, and of course you know um, at 
what we say that in our life, at least some of us have bought houses and that is the biggest investment of our life ever. All right. Not even a car, a house. And, you know, um, and to have another house or to buy another property is impossible. So the solution is to age in place where we are, because we already lived there for years and we've built the community, we've built the uh, familiarity of the place. We know our neighbors, we know our surah, whether you are a Muslim, Christian, um, a Buddhist, but you're familiar with the place, whether you're near the temple or wherever, the market, those are where we socialize. Those are where we meet our friends. So having aging in place is a solution, but but I, I tell you very, very strongly that our environment is not ready to cater for the 8 million Malaysians who are gonna retire by 2040 and who's still gonna age in place. We will not be able to go out of a house because of high curbs, because of bad roads, because of lack of safety, because we can fall easily, because. We are in trouble if we do not do it from now. So I must say that the urban environment and the, is not ready for those 8 million retirees and those who are going to, and, and as you know, doctor, we are, how say, our mortality rate has increased, right? You know, we don't die at 75 majority. We're going to go to beyond 80 years old, um, 85, 86, you know, We're going to live longer because of better health care. So to have a good quality of life, healthy aging, healthy living, what we need is age friendly city, meaning that if we bought the house at 35, for our children ourselves you know as we grow older and 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 to die in place also in that house not putting up in a community i think having a special community the elderly like they have in australia those uh, a retirement village and all that is just not our culture our still i foresee that in future our culture will still be at our place you know children familiar with the where they grew up and caring for the parents. I think that's our culture for the next 30, 20 years. I leave it at that for the moment. Uh, to Mus, 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 you're going to say something just now? Yeah. Um, you see, in, in the most simplest manner, let's face it, we need to start from the individual. Uh, you look at the current houses, uh, we need to create that uh, how should I say, ecosystem that uh, you can actually grow within the house, as what Pong Karia is saying, and also within the cluster of your uh, development, you know, where you need also younger people to interact with the elderly, with the senior citizens, because that will create their, uh, how should I say, happiness, that will create their livability, that will create their uh, social connection. Then, then you will decrease the amount of uh, how shall I say, other sicknesses that related to uh, elderly uh, kind. So uh, the living condition, you must be close to your services. What services would you like? You need to have a medical facility. You need to have a, they call it a, like a, a lobby, a lobby where they can call if there's an emergency. That lobby need not be in a building. The lobby, it can it may be right now, is a, a touch of a handphone where it's connected to a central control center. Then it must also be who is the closest person. Remember when you buy a ticket, airline ticket, they will ask you who's your next of kin that we can contact in case of any emergency. So this is also the same thing. You need to create that sort of uh, ecosystem where people are taking care either uh, personally or even indirectly. Then the uh, gardens, your uh, parkways, your footpaths, your steps, your uh, bridges, all must cater for them. So that's the reason also we need to create not just for age friendly, but you need to create the city like for the children all the way up to the eight years old. So it's actually an all age city. But since we are looking at this uh, age of above 65, but the moment you can create this, you can create for almost any other age. And uh, most of the time, you need to be able to get to things within 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. So, um, um, yes, Dr. Azmizam, go ahead. 
more on the um, as mentioned by Bokaria and uh, Mustafa uh, about the quality of life. For me, uh, quality of life, I, I want to divide two. One is the software and another one is hardware of designing of edge friendly city. The, uh, the software is a society. If how the seniors uh, are supported to age activity, enjoy good health, remain independent, and stay involved in communities. Uh, in terms of economy, I think some of uh, all the cities, the elder macam macam Puan Karia, is still doing business. Business are better able to support others workers. Maybe we need a business to support another workers and benefit from uh, benefit from support to uh, their oldest customer. The lastly, the physical environment, the the hardware, building and street must be safe and very free. Uh, with better access to local businesses and facilities. Uh, we need some more cities with the green spaces. Uh, therefore, everyone benefit, not the elder, that, that's like um, Kemus mentioned. Uh, everyone benefit when we have safer street, sidewalks, more inclusive and accessible facilities and services. That significant contribution uh, to our community uh, from the senior. When we provide the senior, Definitely, you everybody can safe, safe um, can 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 feel the the environment, can 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 use the, the facilities. Even is is uh, provide for the senior, but also for for the for the kids. That's Thank you. Uh, for my views, yeah. Thank you. I'm I'm just going to touch a bit of what Poncaria mentioned just now. I mean, there's 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 always this this phrase that we kind of bandy about a bit in terms of. Uh, it it is not necessary our culture that we send uh, our our parents our grandparents to to retirement homes, and and it, it's almost a sense of painful irony that uh, while we collectively recognize that we have that culture we have that 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 common understanding and sentiment that look you know we, we, that's not us but yet we didn't create a a substitute in terms of policy in terms of framework to kind of compensate that that lack of facility services that we should really be having as as yeah. part of our community right? I mean, and and i think mm. that's that's a that's probably a conversation that that we haven't had because uh and 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 um, and that's and that's come that would lead me to come my, my next question in in terms of uh, what kind of set of services benefits that you know that we should have uh, available so in the past uh, generally our public policy our uh, programs whether it's done commercially whether it's done by the government for seniors uh, have traditionally focused on delivering uh, uh, selected benefits uh, selected uh, pack care package and often you actually have to pay for it <laughs> right because because it it came under uh, the the uh, the care and services act, uh, and and that being manifested in nursing homes and you know in some cases very very rare retirement villages. Uh, I think I saw a statistic uh, somewhere in the Klang Valley that's like uh, over five thousand uh, nursing homes in in the Klang Valley alone, and and this it's literally. It's what it is. Nursing home, you go there and you kind of spend the twilight of your life until um, you know, the inevitable happens. But um, do you think there is a strong and growing realization that there should be a paradigm shift uh, towards creating a conducive built environment that would accommodate uh, older adults, seniors, uh, that would be conducive for their health, well being, uh, their ability, and uh, aging? In was mentioned just now uh, and how do we make this happen how do you think what does it take for us to make our current environment uh, or transform our current environment or make our existing environment adaptable to accommodate aging in place uh, I can I ask a question oh, yeah, yeah. yes Dato. Yeah. I think one of the I think the most important thing is our attitude towards aging itself and also, we, we need to think from the long-term perspective, because I think when we look at this from housing and care, you have to look at long-term care 
element which is really fragmented in Malaysia and there's not much choices because what we have now is for the disabled uh, frail elderly which is the government services and we have the extreme end which is the nursing care where many of us don't really need those care but we pay through our nose to stay in these places but also these places in fact even for government services and also for welfare homes the criteria is independent older person and if they are not independent they cannot go into these spaces so what we are missing is the the semi-dependent and the dependent older person where will they be you know and and these are the things that we need to look at the level of care that is needed and what option is available in terms of housing option and also the care option the pres presently most of the care options that we have is for nursing care but not all elderly require that nursing care so we have a lot of gaps in terms of long long-term care services and also another thing that we need to look at also in in terms of planning we really lump the older person into certain segment and we forget about the other uh, sector of the population because we majority of the government will focus on the destitute and things like that and we spend so much money on that but we tend to forget about those 60 who are functional and are able to afford services and we don't have those things because like, because probably the government said these people can afford so we don't need to talk to talk to that but there are these tech categories of people that will fall into des destitute if policies and programs are not built to cater for this so this is the extreme end that we have and then we have uh, and in terms of the care services and, and, and now we're working on the new PAFAS law that we are trying to marry the aged care uh, services and the, uh, the residential services and also the, uh, nursing, uh, the nursing care services. So we are trying to upgrade the quality of residential care and sort of reducing the requirement of the uh, nursing services that is under the Ministry of Health. So we are we are now looking at how do we marry this? Because for the older person, we don't really need uh, 24 hour nursing to take care of the older person because that is depending on the level of need. So this is the way we are trying to sort of marry this thing into an integrated care, health and social care perspective. Of, of trying to, to marry these two things. Because for the elderly, they don't care which services comes where it comes from. But what we need is we know that we, we went, when we want care, we have it. And then when we want uh, other services, we have it. It does not matter which ministries it comes from. So this is where we need to look at how we can integrate the social and social and healthcare services into one continuum of care paradigm which we, we really need to think about it. And then we really need to think across borders because right now, many of the things are done in silos and there's, there's, there is no cross pollination in terms of how we can do this together and for the for the need of the citizen. I think I'll stop it here. That's why, that's why if I may interject, uh, Papa, uh, the elderly, Actually, elderly, we tend to put them to an area which is actually uh, to a corner. You know, you look at Shah Alam, right? The Warga Emma Center is actually out in the near the industrial area, at section what, 24, 25? 25. Where, where, where we should be putting them in the central city because that's where the most effective distance for anything to go to the place of worship, to go to a shop, to go to a library, to see the park, to enjoy transportation, to even have a good medical and health care. You have multitude. You don't have to actually transport it. It's already there. So it's how we actually now make it friendlier in the city centre. Because the moment you can make that friendlier, our cities will be much, much more friendly for any upper level of society, many age uh, levels, because that's where things are happening. You know, the moment you put the elderly in a desolate place somewhere else, they suffer from loneliness. They suffer from uh, longing for something. They suffer from looking at something. So to me, yeah. we need to understand the psychology of being an elderly. 
the psychology of elderly space usage, the psychology of interaction and cross interaction between mm -hmm. uh, communities, and how they use the playground, the moment, because the the facilities, amenities is already in the city center. The city yep. hall or the local council spend money putting it all in place. So I think we should capitalize on that. And it is actually going to be uh, reaping leaps and bounds. Yes, uh, we can actually even have a dedicated home uh, as what the two friends may be directing us to uh, in the city center. But that's okay because, but maybe in a multi level, but that's fine because some needs exercising, some needs uh, recuperation, some needs to actually uh, uh, work up their own mental and physical. So to me, the city is the best place for the elderly. That, that's probably the start point that we can actually grow uh, beyond from there. I think that's my take for the moment. I add to that because now initially Sufyan mentioned that there, there are going to be more elderly in the cities as we urbanize, right? Yeah. Compared to the rural areas. Yeah. Right. Our children will be in the city, our grandchildren will be in the city, just like my scenario, everyone's in the city. You know, we don't even have a kampung. Our kampung has become a city. It's been usurped by urbanization, right? So we don't have a kampung. So we live in the city. But the thing is, like what you said, uh, Mos, memang, it's definitely that when you put people in aged care homes or elderly homes, or even build a worker a matanta, it's all being people, older people are being marginalized. And, and, you know, and with marginalization of older people, that's going to lead to the early death because they, yeah, because they get, like you said, lonely and they get, you know, like, uh, like, like, an, really, you know, until they die. So um, uh, that's the attitude. Again, I think previously we did discuss and that to, Tengku Professor mentioned about the attitudes of people, understanding old people, understanding the needs because we marginalize them. Most of us keep our parents at home and there's no intergenerational uh, living, you know? So mm -hmm. keeping old people amongst all other uh, society, all other communities is the answer, not having a retirement home or a retirement village or need, because that's going to take more money for the children to keep their parents in there or their mom and dad, whoever's living in the 80s in those places and most children can't afford it. So keeping mom and dad at home is the answer uh, as they grow old, but allowing those parents to occasionally go out or take them out, you know, like I care for my elderly mother, but then the, the outside environment is so limited that you really cannot take her who is wheelchair bound, you know, anywhere. But, you know, yeah. I, tend, I tend to take her out, definitely. You know, she's not going to be sitting all day watching television and I don't want to be doing that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mobility is the, is the important thing. And, you know, most, you know, I can't do that. Yeah, I'll yeah. die in my future <laughs> if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, I think okay. we need another, to look at and the environment for example right now we're talking about build environment we also yeah. talk uh, the talk about digital environment because right now during exactly. the covid time i think digital technology is the answer so i think yeah. for for the few cities of the future you need to have this built environment as perspective and the mobility aspect and also the digital environment how we can merge this together so that we can promote healthy aging so that they they uh, they, they can uh, they can actually achieve independent living at, at within their, their their own place and and also exactly. the intergenerational uh, relationship that they created uh, with uh, through yes. this yeah. Yeah. So i think yeah. uh, that is the way to go i, I want to add something singapore yes, is so well prepared for the aging society. But that Dr. Tunku, Professor. Because they are, the twenty percent of the population are already in the aging group, yes. the elderly. Because they are number one in, in the ASEAN region. Yeah. Right, right. So they have to prepare. Have you seen their policies? Have you seen their yes. the, yes. the assistance they give? You know, not yet yes. to the elderly, but to the children who care for the yes. elderly. Yes. For example, yes. you know, uh what do you call that? Financial assistance to uh, uh, retrofit their homes, changing tiles to non-slip tiles, um, widen the doors for wheelchairs, okay, to bathroom doors, entry doors, putting up ramps. The Singapore government, I'm, I'm not sure through which ministry, really provide those um, assistance. So we need those kind of things. We need I those think, kind of things. Can, can, can I, I add I think what, Yes, Dr. Azmizan, yes, correct. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
I yeah, I want to continue from uh, Pankaria mentioned. I think the age friendly community must start at home. So make sure our home is age friendly, like mm -hmm. uh, like Puan Karya said. Eh? Make sure our home is age friendly. Installing the right equipment such as a handrail, bright lighting that can help our seniors stay active and free from falls in our homes. Second, we must evaluate the environment. As we age, mobility can become more difficult. Take a look at the design of our buildings, parks, transit area, and other uh, structure. Uh, do they support the needs of elder, uh, the senior? No. Nope. If not, find out what we can do to improve them. Lastly, I want to mention about, uh, because I'm going to be uh, one of the, the seniors soon, <laughs> We must leverage the older population. Must leverage older population. Many other seniors want to contribute to the community. Look for the opportunity to engage them with the senior as a volunteer, mentors, or other uh, workers. That makes the community more livable. We don't want these seniors, uh, citizen, um, left within our built environment. Left yeah, behind right. us. Uh, that's no no one point. should be left behind, right? Yes, yes, the, yes. I think, no I think the approach that we need to do is to let the older person together with the designers and planners to co-design or to, to co-create the environment. Because right now we don't we we let the the planners plan, let the architect uh, 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 draw us and things like that, but we we we, we sort of have not really incorporate the user into the planning and the designing of, of things i think and this is uh, if I, I if i may add to the approach that the who is encouraging and also through our sdg goals that inclusive government inclusive society and yeah. put, getting the older people into the becoming co-collaborators and co-designers yeah. of spaces. And I've seen this in Hong Kong, where my colleagues were architects and they they, they invited this, the older person to be redesigning re the park. And then because they know that when, when the older per person comes into the park, they bring in their grandchildren. So they redesign yeah. together the park and they think about where to place their, their payong and things like that, you know, yeah. and, and so, that becomes age integrated and becomes suitable for them. And that's where they, they interact most of the time. So I think if we, the approach that we need to do now is probably encouraging more co-designing co and co collaborators with the users into our planning and then and and that will that will fulfill the sdg 17 i think working together yeah, so that we yeah. can uh all the other stakeholders so that we can design uh age friendly society and cities for for the, to improve the quality of life i think that's the so, main so, that's you, for, so that's if, for, if i uh if i can summarize that the last Five minutes or so. What we're talking about is, is inclusivity or inclusiveness in terms of getting everybody involved. Yes, uh, yes. And you know, taking taking your suggestions now. Maybe we should get the lawmakers to stay at the old folks' homes, uh, uh, scattered around TJ for a couple of days and see whether yeah, that's what they want to end up. See whether that's what they want to hit sixty. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think it, 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 we we gone to a, a pretty interesting uh, part of the discussion. We talk about inclusiveness and inclusivity, and I think the, the, this topic of addressing older uh, adults or seniors in the city, in terms of how we can uh, allow them to age in place, it brings in uh, you know other damage. I mean, you mentioned. Uh, just now, in terms of uh, if we get uh, the seniors involved in designing some of the urban spaces, then you know uh, if they feel comfortable bringing the grandchildren, uh, you know, there's there's a certain degree of inclusiveness that that we've actually achieved, and 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 I think that's probably one of the most neglected. Uh, dimension in terms of urban design, especially in this country, that you know what we do uh, with the underage, you know, children who uh, uh, who couldn't be left alone at home, uh, fend for themselves. Uh, how do you uh, 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 get seniors to be activated, and what kind of set of services do we need to curate and provide for them? Uh, as you know. Um, our development pattern in this country is uh, driven by the legacy of palm oil plantations. So you see townships 
made in in the thousands of acres and it's growing and expanding away from the city center uh that means uh, those who actually you know uh uh well, the traditional phrase, bring the bacon home, rather, but um, uh, the, the Panchari Rizki or the, is, is, is traveling further and longer from their house. So we, we're, a lot of the communities are becoming more in terms of bedroom community. So in, in, in that situation, uh, what do you think, how do we tackle that issue where you have a considerable amount of children and a considerable amount of the aging population and in the ideal situation where they are provided for and cared for and there are uh, provisions for them uh, in what do you think should be done to kind of uh, address and uh, those two uh, uh, facets of, of the community uh, can yeah I'm, I'm going to throw that out. yes most sorry yeah sorry um ladies right. friends of yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, point. I, I I saw I saw the the finger twiggling, so you know I don't. Wanna... I'm, I'm going to twiggle on my fingers, you know. I'm going to twiggle on my fingers. Inclusiveness, okay. so we we don't want to get into the irony of it right now. So, <laughs> um, it is very timely. Um, I think because Kuala Lumpur is undergoing this PSKL 2040, and in one of the framework of the 2040 is this urban regeneration or urban redevelopment of certain older quarters of the city. And if you look around in KL, a lot of, some of the older quarters of the city is actually quite empty because all people are now moving to suburbs. Okay, especially now also with pandemic, nobody lives in the city now. So I think uh, to answer your question, Sufyan we can actually relook that and get a certain block or certain quarter of the inner city or maybe not inner city, mid, uh, mid city, you know, like, like for instance, near uh, Jalan uh, Ipoh or near Rato Kramat, uh, you, know, you have quarters which are already done. That means you save on the uh, building stock, but you recreate that, you make it like adaptive reuse to it because uh, in NUA, New Urban Agenda, they encourage more of this rather than building new stock in order yeah. to save the environment and climate change. And you can gain points and also the better uh, books in the United Nations. And it's very easily done. Uh, the, the thing is, we need to be focused and we bring in the elderly to work with us. We bring in all the experts and we bring in the medical people too. Because that's what happened in Singapore. If you look at the uh, uh, in Singapore, there's this development uh, that they have two hospitals, right? Uh, Kampung... Uh, Admiralty. Yeah, Admiralties, yeah. Admiralty. So, what they did was they created three layers of ground floor and they recreated the old tower block and redo it to two new tower blocks and they got facilities for the elderly, for the young and they got ground floors at almost three levels and it's multitude. So, you, you are yes. not... So accessibility is good because there's a station there. Because among the framework for you to create these age-friendly cities, you need to have good transportation, good housing, good social participation. And what Dr. Azmizam is saying, aspect and social inclusion, civil participation. You must respect that they can still contribute. Communication and information. You talk to them. You ask them questions. Let them think for themselves. Then community support with healthcare and outdoor public spaces with buildings. I think that's probably the simplest way and the cheapest way that you can ever do with existing stock. That's what you became yeah. doing with the public housing in KL. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pond. Yeah, yeah, Go I ahead, agree. Yeah. Densification is the answer. Uh, retrofitting existing areas, um, uh, renovating, um, um, doing development in brownfield areas, which are in areas which have formerly developed, as well as which can also lead to gentrification of cities, existing cities. Now, we look at cities that pop up, pop up way out in the suburbs. One day, those people are going to be 80 years old too. Then what happens? They're going to be not having the services are going to be too far. You know, they have to drive out, hello, at 80, 80 plus. So mm -hmm. those cities are going to age too. So the answer is coming back into the city. You've got to have gentrification of the city in the older areas, building up more densification. But the thing is, someone actually co commented about design guidelines, to review design guidelines. There is already SIRIM endorsed design guidelines. 
The problem now is execution of that guidelines. And I agree with that, not just about policy, that Tunku, is also about when it comes to contractors, when it comes to the agencies implementing the engineering division of Majlis, does the road, does the curbs, too high. Some, and then the architects design another way, you know, there is a, they are working in isolation even at local authority level. They're not talking to each other. They're not really using those guidelines. So this is my frustration. Guidelines are all there. They're perfect. They're just like Singapore's guidelines, but it is implementation and not the understanding of these young people not knowing what uh, an age-friendly city is all about. I think what, uh, what uh, we can do now, yeah, I think yeah. we, we can pick an area and just <laughs> do an example of that where we have, we incorporate all these other experts and then based on the guideline and then show that this can be done and then they yeah. can see it that it can be done. So I, I think that's the way to go from, from uh, I think from my experience being in policy making for the last 20 years, this is how I think we, we without seeing, I think they, they can't see it. You know, right. and, 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 and to me, no, I think... No, 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 men have been overseas. Yeah, they do. But you see, uh, I, I, I know because oh, many of them also have been. gone to Japan to look at community yeah, and things exactly. like that. But they come down, exactly. because, you see, there are things in the bylaws and things like that. Because I remember in 1997, when we had the first uh, Warga Mas punya dasa tu, and then we had hmm. to change the universe, uh, we had to amend the universe, uh, yeah, universal design by laws, yes. uniform building by laws. We hmm. changed that, but nobody looks at the building by laws. In, yeah. when in, in implementation. So I think yeah. we need to really educate people to, to look at that because they are not sensitive because they have not Dato, gone through it. And Dato, me, I, as a I, 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 it's frustrating because we know Dato, that we have been hoping on it, you know, <laughs> and so it's so so yeah, not so we need to do, look at it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm outnumbered. Uh, the, the, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Thank you. And I, I am overwhelmed by the passion and the fire that's, you know, burning in this room. Um, because Dato and, I, Dato and I are about 60. We are fighting for our rights. If we have <laughs> more yes. important, we'll probably go at this until I retire. So, um, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so, but I'm conscious of time, uh, but we do have some questions from the floor uh, or from uh, uh, from Facebook. Uh, we have a question from uh, a Intan Admal. What is the perspective of the current elderly activity center facility initiative by JKM? Uh, are there any initiatives to further support this care facility to be a socially active area? Uh, what are the panel's views? Um, Okay, let me, let me let me chip in on that. I think uh, yep. what JKM does is uh, we, we have the activity centers, and then and then JKM gives I think about three thirty three thousand a year to run this place. But what's what's important is that those active those centers must have activities. But for the moment now they built the they built the centers, but not much activity is there. So I think that is and and to me the approach is not quite right in the sense that um, you 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 need to activate the activities and you work together with other entities because because you know that the the elderly people that uh, the the what do you call it, senior citizen organization that is. Uh, running this place might not be the most efficient one to run the place. So, yeah. and, 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 and I don't think you, you need to pay for that. The government needs to pay for that because the older person, right. or senior, or senior citizen organization that are active can run their own organization and can can have resources to build in that, uh, to have in there. Because to me right now, the government provides the specific uh, uh, allowances for the management of the uh, the center, to me that's not right. To me, it should be paying for the services, uh, for to pay activities. for the facilitators of activities, mm. not the managing of the organization. Right. And, and right. I think, and, and and I know they 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 are doing it in every. Uh, I think uh, I don't not I don't uh, uh, the uh, MP space. That's now over 40, 44 uh, senior citizen uh, activity centers in all over Malaysia, and and and, and I think the the funding is not right. 
the way right. there is funding yeah is okay. an issue Actually, I, because we yeah. can't support that yeah detail that detail that yes my, so my, my sorry my my concern is this um it's okay what jkm because i also deal with jkm when i was handling this uh uh record mobility items for the uh, handicap but it 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 that's what i said just now uh, that if yes. we can actually look at the gravity of the place where do people go where do this po population congregate that will be much more better because sometimes you know it's just like uh, another uh project by uh, another agency because they got the land, they got the thing, they want to build. So when they build, but nobody wants to go, they say it's too far, there's no uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. there's no support. So that's the reason why we need to populate or we need to repopulate wherever there's actually existing infrastructure. Exist. From there, you can build up very easy. Yep. Very easy. Thanks. Okay, so I've got one more question, and, and, and this question is dedicated specifically to Pankharia. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> here we go. All right, so uh, the the question is moving forward, uh, should local authorities make it compulsory for all developers to include senior living or allow for senior living facilities and include provisions for senior housing in the township uh, in the same fashion, the way that low cost and affordable housings were uh, 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 required in some of the larger townships? And if yes, given that there's a potentially low uh, margin in that senior segment, uh, would you think there will be a resistance from the folks or the likes of Radar? And how do you think we can actually tackle that kind of issue? And I know you're there, some of them are your clients. So uh, <laughs> I can appreciate that you're trading on this carefully. I would, I would rather go at it another way, okay? Build your development, developers, please build your developments with the age-friendly design. Yes. You don't have to That's put totally. aside units for hmm. the elderly. If you do, if you do something that's age friendly, that means from the babies to the aged people to the elderly, your development will be taken up by all ages. I can tell you, be the preferred true. development. And not only that, but of course the, the 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 elderly will come in because they find that all facilities there. But it has to be supported by facilities which every segment of the community can use. And open space, walkways, pedestrian walkways, they're all basic needs, shops and all that. But you make it easy for the elderly or for the child or the mother with the pram to push it right into the shop and not climb step upon step upon step, you know, then it will be taken up. Just you don't have to set aside uh, buildings or houses for the elderly. They will naturally come if you build, really rebuild really according to the uh, urban design so, guidelines for so if, if I, for if universal I access. If, if we can, if I can summarize that, if we address the fundamentals of universal access, then yeah. it will naturally be addressing those issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Um, quick parting words, uh, ladies first, Pankaria. <laughs> Guys out there, whether you're young now, you're an architect, engineer, whatever you are, research scientist, you're a CEO, you're going to be bloody old one day. We're going to need all these facilities one day. You will die at home, boring, <laughs> boredom, if you don't have all this place to go outside, have your own mobility and your own freedom. Think about it. Do it for yourself from now. Thank you. I think you need to you need to have an open attitude about aging. You understand your own aging process and the need for other other people. Because if you you yourself do not have to do have, do have a, a negative attitude towards aging, then the, the way you think about aging is quite is going to be negative. So you need to be very open mind and be accept your 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 deficiencies but you need to to be positive about it and then and and yeah, you, should, you should be thinking of yourself as an independent person not depending on other people to live i think that's the way to go okay. uh, that's awesome. yeah um my um takeaway local government is uniquely positioned to support h friendly environment by coordinating decision making friendly their yeah, community local community 
by promoting awareness of age-friendly community uh, design plan, strategy, and policy that support uh, age-friendly built environment. I think the uh, local government needs to play a um, significant role in this kind of development. That's my my point. Most? Okay, for, that. My, for myself uh, as an architect, and I urge all my fellow designers, act responsibly, we do responsible architecture because whatever we do to ourselves, yeah, so we come back and get it back to us because we'll be getting to that age one day or the other. With, uh, so we have to think of the others, then we can solve this issue of the age-friendly city. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly summarize our conversation today uh, as best I can, and, and I pre again I appreciate the enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Um, it's all about inclusiveness. It's all about uh, not marginalizing the seniors. It's all about uh, getting the right uh, consideration into our urban design framework. And and I I was really hoping uh, today, and I hope uh, some of the audiences that are listening in today or watching the, today's session uh, comes from a place where they could actually uh, yield their, their their power of influence. Uh, I know we're be probably being upstaged by a particular member of parliament presenting a mathematical uh, formula in a press conference. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so, and, 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 but, this, but this session is is recorded. And uh, uh, those of you who, who wish to recap the conversation today can go to uh, my aging Facebook page. Uh, and at Dr. Fakul, there'll be a recording of this uh, uh, in permanence, yeah, uh, forever to be seen. And, and hopefully we can get the conversation going. Thank you, everybody. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks for a job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.